we yeah. uh, this is a this is Good Friday today, and Good Friday is a day of celebration. And we want to welcome you to our Good Friday communion around the table together. We're going to celebrate. Uh, God's going to do some great stuff in all of our lives in the next half an hour or so. Now, with me and Jane this evening, uh, we've got some brilliant people and all of these guys are leading the congregations. And so uh, I don't know what you can see on your screen, but I'm going to just say who I can see <laughs> working the way around. So let's welcome Kevin and Sharon, who lead the Burgess Hill congregation. Hey, hey guys, great hey, to you from your orange and red tops. <laughs> Very bright because the rest of us are, are, are sort of in black and blue or whatever. Then uh, leading the Worthing congregation, along with Pastor Jonathan, is Andrew and Sarah Boyd. Great to have you guys. Good, Good to, to be, be here. here. Brilliant to have you guys. Lovely to see you. Yeah. And uh, then we have the Andrews family in Crawley, Rohan, Anna, Woo! and the boys. Hey, guys. How you Hi. doing? Hi. Hey. Hi. So, uh, so these guys are going to be having McDonald's after we finish. So, uh, so they're like, hurry up, hurry we up. Keep it short. Sure. Keep it short. So uh, maybe others are having the same thing in your home as well. And then over to the Squires household with Colin, Hi. Andrea, and Aria. Hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah, doing Thank good. You. So right. we're, we're actually having to all eat at the same time. So. <laughs> they're eating, so they're having a great time. Yeah. Uh, eat with our mouths open, talk oh. with our mouths open. <laughs> <laughs> mouth, that's it. We'll try not to eat with our mouths closed. That's what we mean. Yeah, no, well, all right, thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to have a few minutes where... Uh, we just want to find out from some of these guys on the call with us uh, what is so special about round the table, uh, having communion together, whether you're literally around a table in your home or whether you're in your lounge or wherever you are. We call it round the table because we just want to make time every week in our homes to make space to have communion, pray together, uh, pray for one another and just give God some space to do some powerful things in our hearts and lives. <laughs> and uh, these guys all regularly have communion in their homes and, and do stuff together. So we, we, we will just want to hear from them as well to encourage each one of us that we can do this at home. I know some people sometimes ask, is it all right to have communion at home? Yeah, the early church, they had communion in their homes and they broke bread together. And they, they, they were full of joy and power. And they were doing it. So, uh, so uh, Colin and Kate and Andrea, I know you guys are eating. <laughs> so we'll come to you in a little while. So let's go over to, to, to Rohan, just to get you guys ready anyway, so that you haven't got a mouthful when we come to you. Uh, Rohan and Aaron, the boys there, just maybe just tell us a little bit about how do you have communion or round the table or what does this mean for you guys in your home? Well... We've been doing something that um, Dave um, from J247 has been talking about, um, about doing prayer chain. And so we've got some of our prayer chain here. So normally what, we, what we've been doing is um, we, when we're having dinner, we talk about everybody's day and what's happening. And then we normally come up with um, something that they want to pray about. So there's different things that they've prayed about. And actually, I was thinking about this today, that we've been looking over some of the things and we've like, oh, yeah, there's an answer to prayer there. So it's like a record of what we've been praying. So it's actually I think we're going to carry on doing that because that was during Lent. Um, boys, do you want, is there anything you want to say about some of the things you want to pray? You've been praying about. Yeah. Go on, Zion, you tell everybody what you've been praying about. Praying about what says. Did you hear that? He, he no. says, um, we've been praying about the foxes. Okay. Okay. We've got a fox situation at night time, which is extremely noisy. They're <laughs> like the noisiest foxes in the world. <laughs> so we've got quite a few that talk about foxes. <laughs> we have to pray that the noisy foxes are quiet. Yeah. And also there is one about black foxes, because I heard there were some black foxes and he was a bit worried that there was going to be some black foxes coming that might be even noisier so and they might get in and try and eat him so we've been <laughs> praying about um foxes um anything else judah levi do you want to say anything about what you've been praying for 
Nothing on the, on the chain. Go on then, Juno, say it quite loud. I want to pray about that we go on holiday. Yeah. Yeah, so one of those is for a holiday, that we're praying and believing God for a holiday, wherever that may be. Oh, yeah, it's there. Um, Levi, what was yours? Um, have new friends at my sec new secondary school. Yeah. So wow. Levi starting secondary school in September. So we've been praying about some friends that he wants to make. There's quite a few for sleep on here um, because there was a bit of a time where Levi and Rohan were struggling to sleep. Um, so there's been, and then I asked Levi, how's your sleep been? And he said, yeah, sleep been really good. So God's been doing the work in helping him to sleep. So, wow. So yeah, that's kind of what we do at dinner and just talk. And it's been, it's, it's been nice to actually do communion and pray at the same time. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. And pray for each other, you know, it's really good. Yeah. Especially yeah. if the boys have just had an argument or they've fallen out or they've been mm -hmm. fighting. It's really good to go, right, let's pray for each other. Let's say one nice thing about each other. Yeah. And so they have to say one nice thing about each other and pray for each other. And that always changes the atmosphere. As well. <laughs> Brilliant. That is so good. That's so so good. Some great, great parenting tips in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Levi, you can pray for me that I can sleep at night. Yeah, there's quite a few of us, probably older ladies in the church, who just can't sleep at night. I can hear you. I can hear you. Levi, you can pray for us, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you have to pray. Pray out today. Like, we'll cover and we'll pray that. We'll put everybody before, when we take communion, we'll pray for sleep, that everybody's going to have the best night's sleep ever tonight. Amen. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks guys. So, so good. Love yeah. the prayer chain. Yeah, it's That's brilliant now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all, all the answers that are, are there with it as well. So yeah. Good. yeah. So good. Brilliant. Well done, guys. Nice one. Well, let's go over to uh, Andrew and Sharon. And uh, how do you guys, how are you guys doing down there? Well, we're doing really well, thank you. But, you know, this idea of saying something nice to each other every day, <laughs> I mean, we only usually do that at birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we do. At birthdays, we sit around and we celebrate. We all say something good that we can bring to mind about, you know, whoever's birthday it is. But we'll try and make it a bit more often. And occasionally brilliant. on other days of the year. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but um, we, we tend to do the communion a little bit differently. So we celebrate communion when the service is on on Sunday. And uh, that's been really good. So it's just Sarah and I who who take part in all of that. But um, I, I was following the Bible reading plan last year, and that's reading the whole Bible in a year. And I was just really struck by God's holiness as I was reading it. And you kind of hope that it'll let up a bit when you get to the New Testament, but it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I just realized, not, not in a heavy way, but just how grateful I am to God for his mercy mm. and for his grace, which is available. And one of the verses that struck me right at the beginning of that reading plan was in Genesis, where God says to Abraham, he says, walk before me and be blameless. And I, well, I just felt the Lord draw my attention to it as if, you know, kind of have a look at that, Andrew. And I looked at it and I thought, what exactly does that mean, Lord? Walk before me. Does that mean walk ahead of you? It doesn't mean that. It's a figure of speech. It's exactly the same as the ironic blessing where what the Lord is saying is walk with my face constantly turned towards you. Yeah. Walk with your face constantly turned towards me. Walk in honesty and transparency and in intimacy with me. And it's not the Lord saying, and be blameless. It's the Lord saying, and I will change you from one degree of glory to another. And I can't do that for myself any more than I could walk on water. Mm -hmm. But as I walk in his presence, so he does that. And so communion for me is the receiving of mercy, which I know I need, and grace, which I know I need. So it's become very much more special to me over the past year. Yeah. Yeah. And I think actually I would say the same. We, 
Uh, to be really frank, when Andrew suggested that we um, started, I, I it seemed a strange time, but it's been a really lovely bonding thing for us as a couple, actually, as well, I would say. Um, it, and I was thinking about it today that when we were as as when lots of people um, are married, there's that beautiful verse about the three corded uh, strand. And for us, I think communion is just a real reminder of God's love for us and his, you know, his the centrality of him in, in our family, in our household, in our marriage. And yeah, I think that's really key. Um, so it actually is really important for our relationship that that kind of commitment to one another and and God's covenant mm. um and I've just I, we've mm. we've been just doing the way of the spirit um the drama of salvation which is that grand mm. sweep sorry grand sweep through the old testament um mm. up to up to um Jesus uh death and I I've just was really struck today that that covenant that God has with us it, that the talk of the this is the blood of my covenant and just to be reminded that his covenant that that promise that blessing that is all throughout the the old testament up to Jesus just that amazing love that he has for us that blessing that he longs to pour out for us which is so incredible and the ultimate expression of that is Jesus death. Yeah. Um I I just mm-hmm. I was blown away again today the blood of my covenant. That covenant is just mm. his heart Come of on. blessing. Yeah, and I just got really mm. just really excited again about communion and what that mm. what really that means for us. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's so it's precious. It's amazing when you when you pray together, and, and especially when you break bread and have communion together, what happens just spiritually, relationally, yeah. in that yeah. sense, between yeah. the people involved, obviously, as a married couple, it's brilliant, you know, but also as a family or whoever you're with, mm. it's, it's, um, it's amazing Powerful. how the Holy Spirit just does this, doesn't he, between people when mm. we, we pray together, we break bread together, we share our lives together in that way, something happens. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think I think sometimes we can feel a bit resistant to that because I think, you know, there is real power in it. And I know sometimes yeah. I've been resistant to kind of, you know, do communion and even, you know, in years back to pray together. But oh, my goodness, that that yeah. when you have that three cordedness yeah. and communion yeah. is all about that or or you know, more than three <laughs> when there's a family or a household is so powerful. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we're going to have obviously communion in a few minutes, and we can all we can all take hold of the power of what God wants to do uh, in in a few minutes' time. So, Kevin and Sharon down in Burgess Hill, how are you guys? Doing all right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you've been shielded, mate, for a long time, haven't you? And that finished a couple of days ago. So, welcome to the world. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Oh, mate, is it nice Nice to be able to go out and do stuff? Yeah, no, it's very nice. Yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, guys, so um, just, I don't know, share what you want to share about communion, round table, what God's been doing, that kind of stuff. Just encourage us in terms of what God wants to do in the next few minutes. Yeah, uh, for us, we do around the table on a Friday evening with people from our congregation, usually. Um, so we have a Zoom call and whoever wants to join us uh, can join us. And we uh, love to just take a meeting together and just pray for one another. And it, it's just there's such a power in it. And I think the thing that's really important for us, uh, isn't it, is just to start our weekend with with Jesus really um so we're kind of approaching it from a rest point of view um and not just the power but also the rest that we want to start our weekend with Jesus and taking communion and we we just just this somehow build up throughout the week and even on Friday to up to that moment where we it's just something we really look forward to and it's very important to us um that yeah we've we've just been doing and it's been really wonderful that we've 
I, th- I feel like when we have had those times of communion and prayer um, afterwards, it, it's something, it's just different because you're so aware of, of the power that is in, in taking communion. And um, it's been lovely to see what, what God has done through that. And, you know, when people have been unwell and still come on the call and see things different or change mm-hmm. or circumstances turn around. So that's been really, really encouraging. So we've really loved that, haven't we? Yeah, they've li- they've definitely been some um, quite powerful times of prayer, just following from taking communion and then asking simply, is there any prayer uh, requests or needs? And uh, just everybody getting stuck in and praying out and, and, and seeing God's power release in that moment. I think, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's been a great um, thing as well. Um, others were talking about this bonding and we really have seen that with the congregation um, as well, that when people have been joining on the Friday just brings people together in a different way than just spending time socially. So, um, so yeah, it's been really good. Yeah. Mm. I really love that. Really good. That's brilliant. Um, so I, I, I think one of the things, isn't it, with the early church is, is they were devoted to, to in Acts 242, it says to the word, um, to the fellowship sharing of life, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And so they obviously, value the word you know um fellowship just sharing life together but obviously breaking bread that there was something powerful in because jesus said didn't he do this in remembrance of me and it wasn't just to be a memory but when you do this remember who i am what i've done what this means and appropriate the power of that and and when we do that with a group of people whether it's in our own home household or what it like saying your congregation every Friday when you do that something happens then it? it binds people together there's a there's this 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 spiritual unity if you like that is is cemented and strengthened um you know around what what's going on is that what you found with everybody in Burgess Hill yeah definitely yeah we, we've definitely seen that and uh and yeah people coming back week after week and just uh enjoying and um yeah it's just been really positive yeah really there's there's something about remembering what jesus has done taking the communion but obviously whether you take it um you know as as a as a household or with your congregation or whoever you do it with it is impossible to not become closer connected because in that moment you're not just connecting relationally but you're Mm -hmm. connecting spiritually and I think that's the that's why communion is so powerful in your household when you know things happen or your kids change or you you can't argue if you're taking communion together because there's, <laughs> there's something that that happens you know when you're choosing to connect on a spiritual level as well rather than just in a relational. Um, mm. So I think that's why we we find it so important and just so such a privilege. Really, mm, great. Great, thanks, guys. And then uh, let's let's nip over to the squires' household. Um, how are you guys doing as you're chomping into your food over there? <laughs> finished. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Give you enough time to finish, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone's just having their banana. Um, you know, we've um, we've been doing kind of communion kind of fairly sporadically, to be honest, um, as a as a family. Um, but, uh, different different times in different ways and, and I think that um, you know what you said Pastor about being able to do it at home and that kind of is that okay uh, I don't know if this is pushing the boundaries of is this okay but we found that it's the, the important thing is not the the when where or, or how but is um is, is about to the remembering Jesus part there was one time um a while back when when the three of us before Harry was here had um excuse me had communion um uh, when we just had some chinese and we'd just been eating together and i thought oh, it's been so lovely you want to be great just to take communion so we um we we didn't have any bread in the house and we didn't have any wine and none of us drink so we're like well we've got prawn crackers and a can of coke is that okay and so we took communion but the important bit of course being that jesus saying every time that you eat and drink you know and it's it's about that just doing that together as family so one of the things we've found has been really lovely um recently is just every day we eat together or every day that we can we eat together around the around the table as a family mm. and that's not something that we've um 
we've really been able to do in the past just because of everyone being so busy in different schedules and that kind of thing. So it's been it's been really lovely. And one of the kind of the, the traditions we've started is um is that every day when we uh, we've had our dinner is that we read a story from this book, which is Thoughts to Make Your Heart Sing by Sally Lloyd Jones. And it's it's just a little kind of daily devotional for for children, really. But actually, the <laughs> truths in it yeah. are so good. Yeah. And so we read one of these every day. And so we wanted to read one to you today. But actually, we thought this was more appropriate. This is from the Jesus Storybook Bible, which is um uh, another another translation paraphrase of the Bible for Children by Sally Lloyd Jones. And so we thought we would invite you to join us for our story time today. Now that we finished dinner, so um, is everyone ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for a story? Yeah. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. He picked up a cup of wine and he thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. But this is how God will rescue the whole world. <laughs> my life will break. And God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart. And your heart will heal. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins and you'll be clean on the inside, in your hearts. So whenever you eat and drink, remember, Jesus said, I rescued you. Uh, Can we say amen? Amen. amen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, amen. So we've just been reading a story like that every day around the, well, most days, mountain over most days, um, around the table and just to invite a bit of time of, of just Jesus and reflection and something mm. that he's done for us around the table. And it's been really lovely just to be Thank family you. and family with, yeah, with Jesus at the table as well. Mm. Brilliant. That's so good, guys. So good. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> It's brilliant. I mean, you've already, you've read the, the, the verses already yeah. in terms of what Jesus uh, did, what the, you know, the bread is his body that he's given for us and that he's become that sacrifice, you know, for us on our behalf. Uh, and took all of our sin and pain and sicknesses and everything onto himself on his own body on the cross. Mm. And uh, so he was saying to the disciples, when he was, we just read, um, this is my body, which is given. And it's interesting how in the Passover moment, which is what they were having, the Passover meal, for those guys, they were remembering the Passover, coming out of Egypt, coming out of slavery and into freedom, deliverance, to go and worship God on Mount Sinai and then ultimately into the promised land. And, and Jesus was saying, well, the, the lambs that were sacrificed to put the blood on the doorpost, <clears throat> instead of those lambs being sacrificed, I've now become... Mm. sacrifice to bring you into a different freedom uh it's it is a freedom from slavery but not a physical slavery but a spiritual slavery to the power of sin and uh, and this my body is going to take on all of that stuff so you're no longer going to be slaves to sin and i'm going to mm. deal with the power of sin so that you can be forgiven you can come in <clears throat> you can come into a new life sorry <clears throat> with me and so, so, so powerful what communion represents. And mm. then he said, took the cup, didn't he, with the, the guys at the Last Supper, as, as Colin just read, and said, this is my blood, which is given for you. And we, we know that when we read the whole story, <coughs> excuse me, how Jesus' blood was shed in different ways, uh, whether it's through the whippings and the beatings, whether it was the crown of thorns, uh, whether it was the nails through his, his hands and his feet, in different ways, what took place in his blood basically is for the forgiveness of mm. sins. And we don't need the blood of an animal anymore. Like they did at Passover and what that meant. Uh, we now have a new covenant, which is the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus, which enables us to be able to come boldly mm. before God. So let's take a moment, shall we, in our homes. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to break this loaf of bread that we have here. And, um, and, but what, what you do at home, you might have a cracker, you might have some bread, you might have something else. Uh, you don't always have to have wine. Um, 
if, if you don't drink alcohol at all, Sometimes you might just want some grape juice or, or something that represents um, the, the, the blood of Jesus. Um, but it's, it's like Colin said, it's what we're doing by faith now that's mm. really important. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to break the bread. And then what we're going to do is give you guys about five or six minutes in your homes to, to have community together, to pray for one another. OK, so if you you know, parents pray for your children, children, maybe pray for your parents or whoever's in your household tonight in your home. And while that's happening, uh, Toby and Luke have recorded a track uh, and that's going to play while you're all having communion and praying for each other. Now, also, we want to believe that God's going to heal people right yeah. now. So one of the things that Jesus did on the cross was deal with every sickness, mentally, mm -hmm. emotionally and physically. So. There might be some things now that you, that God wants to do in your home and bring some healing, deal with some pain or some physical symptoms, whatever they are, and see those change and see those uh, those heal. And uh, and then when the song's finished, we'll come back together uh, like this, and uh, and then we'll just pray before we we finish and, and let you guys go into the rest of the the evening. So Jesus, we thank you that you gave your body, and we just break this bread now bit of a workout uh <laughs> representing you giving yourself and everything that you took upon your body yeah leading up to the cross and on the cross itself and also the cup which you said this is the blood of the new covenant the covenant that was shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins and so we remember not just in our minds remember who you were but we remember the power of who you are right now today in our in our lives so the track's going to start and I want to encourage you, have communion, pray for one another. And if you finish that in the next few minutes, just use the time to worship with the track and then we'll come back in a few moments, okay? I fix my eyes upon the cross I'm reaching out with all I've got I'm letting go to start again I need your love, that's why I'm here Waiting outside my life it goes So while I'm here I'll give my own Are my peace within the storm Here at the cross I'll find my home You are greater You are greater Than it all You are greater and mercy found me all oh, the blood of Jesus is greater Lord I believe you rose again and I don't believe this is the end you never fail you have a plan My life you hold within your hands So I walk by faith and not by sight You are my source, you are my life In you I live, I will not die You spread the can fly. You are greater, Jesus, you are greater than it all. Yeah, you are greater, Jesus, you are greater than. Jesus is greater 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we just thank you that you are greater, Lord, than anything else, Lord, than anything that comes against us, Lord, any sin, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your blood has covered us. It covers our, our lives. It covers our families. It covers our household, Lord Jesus. And just as, Father God, when you saw the blood pass over, Lord, that the that no plague can come near us, no no sin can touch us, no no sickness, no no death now can touch us or affect us Lord Jesus because your blood covers our lives Lord and we thank you we thank you today that you shed your blood for us Lord that we can be free from sin free from sickness we can live Lord live fullness of life with you Lord Jesus we thank you we thank you Lord today we thank you tonight Lord for what you have done on the cross for us Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the power of your blood at work in our lives, Lord. The power of your blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Father, we just thank you that you made this so simple. Just to break bread, drink the cup in our homes, in our lives, and take hold of the power of who you are. We thank you that it didn't make it complicated, just really simple. Mm. We thank you that all of us can do this with you together in mm. our homes. Mm. So Father, as we just come to an end of this time together uh, online, just want to read number six, 24, 25, 26, the, the priestly blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Mm. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. That amazing shalom, total well-being, his abundant goodness in your home, in your lives, in your family, in your household, whatever your situation is. Yeah. So, guys, thanks a lot for being with us. Uh, all the guys, Kevin and Sharon, thanks, guys. Great to see your smiling faces. Andrew and Sarah, thank you so much for being with yeah. us, just sharing. Love you guys and, and the Squires household. Uh, thanks, guys, along with all of the Andrews tribe. Thanks, guys. Thank Bless you. you. Enjoy your McDonald's. <laughs> And uh, as you as you feast on that, and uh, it's just been great to be together. So mm. bless you guys. Have a have a very very happy Easter. Blessed weekend. Uh, Sunday morning is ten a.m. online. We're gonna have a family celebration. It's gonna be about an hour or so, uh, and uh, there's gonna be lots in there for everybody. It's gonna be a lot of fun as well. And uh, God's gonna do some great stuff Sunday morning. Um, this is what I'm gonna say now is. is mainly for people in the Horsham congregation, but if anybody wants to check this out, you can do. Horsham Churches Together uh, put together a 30-minute kind of program for Easter today called The Power of the Cross, and, and there's lots of different churches represented on it, and uh, the song you've just heard is part of that, that program as well. So if you just Google the Horsham Churches Together, Horsham Churches Together website, and on there, on the homepage, there's a, a link there and then you can check out um, that. So it's been sent around to lots of people. People have been sent to unsafe and family as well to have a look. So it's the power of the cross if you're interested in, in having a look at, at that. So, guys, be really, really blessed. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you Sunday. All right, bless you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye. 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 Bye.